Hi once again and welcome to episode 795. The topic today is um, in relationship, do you change yourself or do you change them? And I'm going to explain what that means in more detail and also give you some clues as to which might be a better choice because I'm sure you want to know this stuff. Well, if you're watching, I hope you do. <laughs> so before I jump in, let me let me introduce myself to know who I am and uh, all that stuff. So hi, my name is Barry Selby. You probably figured that out already. Um, I am the author of the best-selling book, 50 Ways to Love Your Lover, a book about love, love and relationships for singles and couples, men and women. I'll mention that now and put the link at the back end. I'm also an inspirational speaker and a love and relationships expert, helping women create balance in love, life, and business. I'm also a passionate champion for the Divine Feminine, which informs my work and why I support women so much, because I do. And also what inspired these talks over two years ago called Messages for the Masculine Inspiring a Feminine Heart. That's the full title, by the way. So today we're at episode 795. And the topic today is, in relationship, do you change yourself or do you change them? Kind of, I think that's what the title said, something like that. So let me break that down a bit first and introduce myself. Let me introduce the topic so I'm making sure the microphone's plugged in because I can't tell if you're hearing me. I think I'm okay. So, when you fall in love <laughs> and you get into this amazing new relationship and things progress, you get intimate, you get connected, the chemistry starts to wear off, you start to dig into the deeper stuff, that's the question point I'm asking, when is it that you feel like you need to make a change? And the question again is, when that change request shows up inside, is it something you do for yourself or you do to the other person, as in, you get my point. They're trying to fix them, change them, do something like that. Hopefully, you already know that where I'm going with this, which is that if you're doing that for somebody else, you're making a mistake. Excuse me, not a mistake. You're not willing to stand up for what you really want. Mm, let's make that interesting. See, this is this is. Um... Okay, we're going to go with there. This shows up the way it shows up. So, if you're in a relationship where, when you get into that partnership, you want to change them. That's a good cue to leave because uh, I don't want to say you make it, I don't want to say you made a bad choice, but you may have made a choice that didn't serve you. That's probably a better way of putting it. And here's the thing: people I know, people in the world, <laughs> a certain percentage of the population has a tendency or a habit to fall into relationships more readily than maybe they should or ought to. And the thing is, if you've been noticing that every relationship you get into has got to a place where you want to change them to be different to fit your desire, you might want to spend some time being single. Because those hints, those clues, those repeated experiences of partnership that aren't working is feedback to you that maybe you need to do some changing. And not necessarily that you need to change who you are, but maybe change your perspective or your um, targeting system, so to speak. I'll break that down in a moment. Speak to the other side for a moment about changing yourself. If you're in a relationship and in the relationship you feel the desire, the urge to improve yourself, to change, to grow, that's great. Now, if your partner is asking you to change, again, that's the same thing on the other shoe. Or the same, excuse me, same thing on the other foot. Same shoe, other foot, that's what I'm trying to say. And it might be out of alignment for that to happen. So, fast rewind to the first one. <laughs> There's a caveat I want to give on both of these, both if you want to change them or if they want to change you. If it's something where it's an invitation for, that, for you to invite them to step up to a new level of participation, maybe maybe you, dis, you want to go, maybe something you love doing, they have no clue how to do and they may be scared of it and you want to invite them to come do it with you. That's, that's, that's kosher, that's okay. And vice versa with the other person too. The reason, the, the, um, I'm looking to find the delineation and say this the right way. But if you're in a relationship with somebody and you want them to change because you can't stand them when they're not the way you want them to be, that's the clue. Let me be, let me be sharper about that. Because changing relationship ideally is happening, either it's self-generated or relationship-generated. Maybe you discover new hobbies, new passions, new adventures. Maybe you start traveling together because you never did that before. Those are all good things. Those are changes for the positive. But if you're looking to say to them, like, you need to change for me because you're not the right person. That's an error in approach. And also if they do that to you, an error in approach. So change as a framing, as a context, as a 
but part of being in a relationship is healthy you know um was it um billy joel's song don't do don't go changing to try and please me stay just the way you are it's like mm, not so much because in a relationship if you're not changing meaning you're not growing you're not evolving you're pretty much stagnating and if you want to be in a relationship that's static and staying the same great find a partner that wants to do that and you'll be fine however if you've been following my broadcast and you follow me or you watch my work much of my messaging let me just say <laughs> that change is good when it comes down to improving yourself and improving the relationship you're in if you're a single person that's in several relationships, my encouragement and my suggestion certainly was for my tr myself true. Every single relationship I've been in has been better than the one before. That meant something had to change. I did. And if you're on the same boat where you've been in several relationships and you've been changing, then, sorry, and the relationship's been improving, then something inside of you has been changing too, which is good. Now, if you're in a long-term relationship, marriage, partnership, whatever that is, and the relationship is improving, growing, the same thing's true. You're changing, and so is your partner. These are good things because, frankly, change is a positive experience when it is um, additive and, and, and self-generated. When it's used as a threat or leverage, not so much, as I mentioned. So the dance of this in the relationship is, first of all, be clear what you're looking for in a relationship and, look, and be clear what you're looking to bring into a relationship. Because if you're looking to be in a relationship with somebody and you have 17 things you love doing, like horse riding, backpacking, hiking, swimming, surfing, blah, 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 and the other person does none of those things, you might be holding out hope for something that's not going to happen, as in they won't change to do all those things. Makes sense, right? However, if you are looking to explore new parts of your life and your partner does some of those things already, maybe they skydive and you don't, and you're like, I wasn't going to do that. Then you've already opened the door to be open to them inviting you to do what they do and you'll look forward to that that's a change for the positive again choice point so this is kind of hopefully making you can feel the resonance of which one's which which one's positive which, which one's negative change itself is a potent powerful and useful skill to have in your life any any way in your life because when you're willing to change and be flexible in your life your life can flow more easily when you're stuck and stoic and static all the s words there then your life is tend to be more more ratchety and crunchy and hard to work with. And having had eight careers, having lived in four different countries, I would say that I've heard, certainly learned how to be flexible. <laughs> and for me, it's been a benefit because it's made my life a lot more fluid and a lot more joyful and I'm a lot happier in who I am. So I personally stand up for that and say, the more that you evolve and grow and become a better human being, the more joy you celebrate, share and enjoy. So change is good. On the, other, on the other end of the spectrum, and the inverse of that, when you are in a relationship where the change is a threat level change, as I mentioned earlier, as in, you need to change and do this or I'm out of here, then maybe you need to be out of there. If the change is one where it's a threat of violence, as in emotional, mental or physical violence or sexual violence, those are signs that, again, you may want to protect yourself and, and take care of yourself and get out. So change, because the other part about change, as I said, change evolution, ev change elevation in relationship is great. But sometimes people change in relationship because the walls come down. So I have to go off, I need to go down this avenue for a moment, so bear with me. Let me be blatant about this. Narcissists don't show themselves up front. They only show their true nature, the true colors, once they already have you in their spider's web. So there are people who will be looking for a relationship who will be on their best behavior right at the beginning. But once you get into a relationship, that all falls away. And you start seeing the real person who may be a narcissist or may just be a slob or maybe doesn't want to move or, it, or is going to be totally codependent. That's the thing. I mentioned a couple of broadcasts yesterday and the day before about being, one, being patient and take your time when you're dating to get to know somebody and, and ideally see between the cracks, see who they really are is somebody you want to be with. Because sometimes the facade doesn't match the content and it's not good when you find out who they really are. I also mentioned the thing about, um, oh, that was love bombing. Talking about narcissism in another context, that was a few days ago. If you know what love bombing is, that was a previous broadcast two, three days ago. I'd invite you to watch it. If you're dating, that is. If you're already in a relationship, this isn't, that won't be relevant to you, most likely. Um, so change, as I mentioned, is good. Change under threat or... Um, 
a negative influence, not so good. It's kind of black and white, really. And I'm a fan of change as growth, as change as opportunity, as to change yourself to be a better person. As I said, being single is a good thing in this context. I mentioned this earlier, that if change is happening, sometimes being single is the best place to do the work. I've shared many times before in my broadcast how I work with single women to help them become more whole, help them heal their hearts, own their space, own their light, own their joy. It's much easier to do when you're single, just to say that clearly, because it's not my it's not my role or my um, commitment to help you change the way you are in a relationship. That's something different, and I don't generally go there. Has ha Once in a while I've done that, but it's not my preference. I rather work with people when they're single. And again, mostly women. Some men want to seek me out, that's fine, but mostly work with women, because I understand women, I support women, and being a masculine presence with women helps them realign themselves too. So there's a, there's a synergy there. So being single and making changes in your own personality, and changes in your own beingness, and changes in your lifestyle, preferences, choices, all of these things are good to do because there's nobody else to be influenced by it. You're free to do what you want, free to be who you want, and free to live as you wish without somebody else either having to conform to it or judging it or anything else. You get to be free. So being single is a good thing that way. And when you do that, it's a much more potent and more generally more permanent fix because there's nobody trying to hold you in a place you're not meant to be. So again, making these changes and changing who you are when you're single is a good choice, including changing your preferences of what you're looking for in partnership. Because if you're going from relationship to relationship without any goal, any dream, any vision of what you want to be with, and you're getting what you're not wanting, that's a clue that maybe you should get a bit clearer in your visioning of what you want. Frankly, if people took the time to get clear about their vision before they, they took out their phone and started swiping through dating apps, they'd have much more success and much more joy in what they meet. Now, I didn't say don't do the dating apps, but I did say is do your preparation work first, which is really get clear about your vision, who you are, what you deserve, and what you're about before you go looking for somebody else. That should be obvious for everybody, I trust. I hope it is. And to that end, I'm going to put a few links in the comments for you if you're actually looking in this area or if you have some challenges when you're single. Um, again, I mentioned my book at the top of the show, so that's going to be in there as well. But I will put in my um, online course called Attract the Man You Want for the ladies, this one is, just to be clear. Although, I guess gay men could do it. Maybe. It's, it's probably meant for women, just to be clear. So Attract the Man You Want, that'll be in the comments too, which is really a, a self-guided course. It's an eight-module program to help you get clear about what your vision really is so you can change what you're really looking for to match your vision, your heart's desire, and your intention. So when you go meet somebody, you'll know clearly if that's a fit or not. Much better way of choosing partnership. Secondly, I'll put in the comments as well a reminder that the self-love practice that I teach and I share and the guided meditations that I have for that will be in the comments for you to check out as well because self-love as a pivot point is fundamental to learn how to grow and change and become better at, be at, at, become better at being yourself. Yeah, that works. So this is kind of a um, reminder that change is good when it's self-reflected and self-chosen. When it's changing somebody else against their will or to fix what you think is broken is not a wise approach in a relationship. And even if you're out of a relationship, it's better to change your, as I said, to realign your vision, your intention to what you want. So when you're looking for love, you're looking from the lens that you want versus from a default, perhaps whatever shows up type thing, which is not what I recommend. So get clear on your vision, know what you're looking for, change internally what you need to in terms of your beliefs, your wiring, your, your self-support, so you know what it is you really want. When you know that, then your choices improve, your partnerships will get better, and you have a lot more fun. And if you've watched my broadcast, you know I'm about having a great time in a relationship. That's my message, my passion, my, it, my mission to help you have that. So last thing I'll put in the comments as a reminder is a, a chat with me. Um, for those of you looking for love and having challenges and you are single, there's a little link I'll put in the comments, which is a chat with me. You can have a, a quick talk to see where you are, what you want, how you can get there, and if I can help you. Fair enough. <coughs> Excuse me. Clog, getting the clamp there for a second. <coughs> okay. All right, so I hope this made sense to you. I haven't seen any questions, comments, so I think we're doing okay. If you have any questions or comments in the replay or watching later on afterwards, you can put them in below and I'll respond when I sign off. Again, there'll be four links in the comments that I mentioned. Yeah, four links in the comments I mentioned. And if you haven't seen my broadcast before, here's a little nudge in that direction. You can join me live on Facebook on my personal page, which is Barry Selby on Facebook. 
um, at 5 p.m. Pacific time every day of the week, seven days a week. You can also watch my replays on my business page on Facebook, which is barrysilby.author. You can like my page and watch them there. Alternatively, if you're a YouTube viewer, which you might be watching this on YouTube by chance, if you go to my channel on YouTube, which is Barry Selby, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. There's a playlist on there called Messages from the Masculine, and all my replays are right there. Every one of my talks is in, intended to inspire, inform, and educate, and entertain, hopefully, too. And the links I provide in the comments are there to help you as well. Take advantage, take advantage of those for your own benefit, for your own upliftment, for your own joy. And I hope this has been of help to you. If you have any questions, thoughts about this, again, feel free to put notes in the comments. If you want help, reach out to me. That's what I'm here for. Yeah, to make sure I said that right. <laughs> and I invite you to join me tomorrow. Same time, same channel, 5 p.m. And if you have any questions, thoughts, when you reach out to me on social media, you can do that as well. And as always, please take care of yourself. I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye.